Hey, today we're talking about lesson 24 and its parentheses and the associative property. Um, a couple of learning targets for us to take a look at here before we begin. Um, we're going to be practicing solving problems containing parentheses. We will be reviewing the proper order of operations, most importantly that key, the parentheses, and how that work um, needs to come first when doing linear expressions, and then also comparing two expressions and stating whether the associative property applies. So when we're grouping um, numbers together, we're talking about numbers who are associating together and thus the associative property and when that applies and when it doesn't. This next screen right here is just a review of those order of operations. So um, looking um, in, or, in order, must follow this proper order of operations. Whenever we're looking at a linear expression, we need to follow this order of operations. We always do the work within parentheses first. Then we move on to work with exponents. Then kind of together, multiplication and division. And then after that, together, addition and subtraction. And those ones that are grouped together, the multiplication and division, and then the addition and subtraction, that work is done together, but that being said, it's actually done left to right. So making sure um, it's kind of done together, but then that work is done left to right. Um, I did this work ahead of time, but I just wanted to pause here for a moment and show you doing the work within parentheses does make a difference doing that first. So looking at these two expressions, they contain the exact same digits. We have a six, five, and four, six, five, and four, same operation, um, multiplication, addition. And when I solved what's in the parentheses first, I broke that down, five plus four is nine. I dropped that nine down, dropped down my six, and I ended up with six times nine is 54. That was the proper way to do this problem. Without parentheses down here, um, we just work left to right. If there are no parentheses, we're just working left to right, and we end up with six times five is 30, plus four is 34. So parentheses do make a difference. I'm going to pull up our first example here, and I'm going to zoom out a tiny bit so you have more room to see the entire problem. Um, I'd like you to pause, please, read this example, and try to think about how this would look like as an expression written out. So um, I'll read it really quickly, then I would like you to pause it and give this a try, and then I will unpause my video um, showing my work on how to solve this problem. Melody drew eight flowers. She painted four flowers blue, and she painted four two flowers red. How many flowers were not painted? Go ahead and pause and give this one a try. All right, so here you can see I've just set up the equation um, and I've just basically taken what was in word form and dropped it down into a written equation. So Melody drew eight flowers. There's my eight. Um, from that, it doesn't say this up here, but from that I know that she painted four flowers blue and two red. So that's what I'm associating together. That information is associated together. I'm going to put that within parentheses. So from those eight flowers, she painted four blue and two red. So now their final question is how many flowers were not painted? All I have to do is solve this equation. I'm going to do the work that's in parentheses first. So four plus two is six. I'm going to bring down my 8. 8 minus 6 is 2. And I'll do my best to write a label with this stylus pen, but my label in this case, of course, would be flowers. Okay, <laughs> going on to the next example. This is where we're going to look at comparing two expressions. So um, comparing the expression on the left here, this 2 times three plus four versus the two times three plus four. I'd like you again to pause this, give this a try and decide if um, this is greater than, less than, or equal to. All right, so you can see here that I've worked out these expressions to come to an answer at the end. Um, from this one, again, super important that I do the work within parentheses first. So when I do that, three plus four gives me seven. I can bring my two straight down and I end up with two times seven is 14 on this side on the left. When I do the work on the right, I do the work within parentheses first again, and I get two times three is six, and I just drop down my four, six plus four is 10. So when I'm just, when I have those two answers at the end, I end up with 14 compared to 10. And then of course, 
14 is greater than 10, our answer is greater than. Here's just a little bit of vocabulary and information about the so associative property. I'll be attaching these notes, so this will be really important for you to review, but just me talking through the associative property to you, um, basically what that means is we can group, when we're doing linear expressions with addition or multiplication, we can associate different numbers together, we can group different numbers together, and still end up with the same result in the end. So taking a look here, here's an example of an addition problem with the associative property. We have A, B, and C. We can group the B and C on this side, or we can group the A and B. As long as we're dealing with the same numbers, we're going to get the same result in the end. And the same, of course, applies to multiplication. So we can associate or group together um, B and C, or we can do a and B, and no matter what, we're going to get the same answer. Um, really the most important thing for you to know in your homework or as you're moving forward in your math, if you're ever asked about the associative property, um, it, it doesn't apply to subtraction or division, just to addition and multiplication. Um, taking a look here, we have a couple more examples. These are really good for you to practice. So um, it says, uh, write the proper comparison symbol you, and, and state whether the associative property applies or not. So we just have two examples here. Again, I'd like you to pause this video, do the work, and unpause when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, so here you can see that I've worked out this expression, or both expressions actually, and um, the first one here, A, we're dealing with a division problem. So of course I'm doing the work that's in the parentheses first. I started over here on the left. 16 divided by 4 is 4. I drop down my, the rest of my expression, so I have 4 divided by 4, I end up with 1 here on the left, and then I'm going to do the work on the right. Again, doing the work within parentheses first, 4 divided by 4 is 1. All right, sorry about that, I had to take a quick phone call, but um, just to move back to the right side here, we have 4 divided by 4 is 1, I drop down my 16, 16 divided by 1 is 16. So. Um, Definitely 16 is greater than 1, which leaves me with an answer here of less than. And does the associative property apply? And um, this is a no. That's a big no there. Uh, the associative property doesn't apply. It's a division problem. We have the exact same digits here. Notice 16, 4, 4, 16, 4, 4. They're in the same order, but when... Um, when different numbers are grouped, it does make a difference, meaning the associative property does not apply there, doesn't work for division. Let's take a look at B though, because this is addition, and um, what we just read on the previous slide is that it does apply to addition. So let's just look at my work here. Um, we have the same digits. Notice that right away, 8, 4, 2, 8, 4, 2, they're in the same order. We're using the operation of addition, um, but on the left, the eight and the four are grouped or associated, and then on the right, the four and the two are associated. As I did this work, I did what was in parentheses first. Eight plus four is 12. Drop down my two, I ended up with 12 plus two, and I got 14. And then I did my work on the right. I did what was in parentheses first. My four plus two gave me six. I dropped down everything else, so I have eight plus six, and that gave me 14. So no matter which numbers I associated or grouped together, I still ended up with the same result in the end. My answer here, of course, is that they are equal, and yes, the, asso ugh, the associative property, sorry, that's supposed to be a Y for yes, it definitely applies, okay? So that's it for the examples that I'm gonna walk through with you today. Just